OpenAI New Native Image Generator is quite insane. It can create thumbnails, it can apply different styles to your pictures, generate beautiful product marketing images, redesign your interior, and so much more. Nearly every day people are coming up with crazier and crazier workflows. So in this video, I'm not gonna only show you what ChatGPT, the new native image generator is, but also some powerful use cases and how to use it effectively. So let's just jump into it. First, we have here the article that they put out and I'm just pretty much gonna summarize it. So what they did, they updated the previous GPT-40 model. So it's not a completely new model, but now before what it was doing to generate images, what it will do is you will you will have here the model and it will call uh, DALI 3, which is the AI image generator model for OpenAI. And it will call the model and it will grab an image back and you will see it on the chatbot. Now, this GPT-40 is a multi-model model. So what that means is that it's going to be able to not only take tests, but also it's going to be able to take images. And also it's going to be able, that same model, instead of being calling DALI, that same model is going to be the one generating not only text, but also images and outputs. And the craziest thing is that not only is going to be able to generate amazing images, but also edit them. And we have here a few examples. So the first one that really caught my attention was the text. So as you see here, the text is quite amazing, right? And it's something that majority of AI image generators kind of struggle with the text. But here, even the reflection is just uh, quite amazing. So there is another image in here, kind of the reflection, you can see it and how powerful the text is in there. Um, but there are other different uh, scenarios which you're going to be able to apply either the editing capabilities or the generation. So one of the biggest ones is going to be the character consistency. You're going to see here that you can probably put a sketch of a penguin here and you can say, well, turn it into reality or turn it into this green 3D model, etc. So you're going to have this character consistency, which is something that a lot of image generator models struggle with. Also the text rendering, I was just kind of mentioning how good it is, especially for these product marketing ideas for images. So that's going to be a game changer. Also uh, here again, to transfer styles, we see the sketch back again, turn it into reality. And lastly, like the details, right? It's going to be really, really good at specific details. And I'm going to be showing you some of, of this that I have done on my own. Kind of says the improved capabilities, which obviously we have talked about the text rendering. So here we are able to see these uh, witches in here and you have the text here and it's pretty much everything looks amazing. The, the whole text that is not like major, major issues that you can say. And of course, the character consistency, quite amazing. You have here the cat that is the reference and it says, give this cat a detective cat and a monocle. And you see that is the same cat, but now with the actual detective cat and the monocle. Now it's time for me to show you how to actually use it. And also some of the tips. The first one, I wanted to kind of talk about this one, which is I found this image on, on Twitter. So it was created actually this image, this, um, product marketing app. It was actually created by this model by GPT-40. And it was just amazing. So I wanted to kind of replicate it for a different product, right? And that's kind of what I was mentioning that it, you can create beautiful product marketing images. So in here, I wanted to apply that style to a product that it says product manager is a hat, right? And pretty much what I say is create a product marketing ad that has the style of the one given, but for the hat provided. And you can see here that it did an amazing job, right? Copying that. But the prompt is not too great, right? Because I could have say, for example, the price and all that. So of course I can then prompt it later on and say, well, change the price. I want it to be $10, for example, right? So you can change and you can modify. And I'm going to be giving you tips towards the end, like the best way to edit these images. But if you are starting out, the first thing that you will have to do is first you will ask the prompt in here. So you will just write the prompt. If you wanted to grab a specific style, you will upload an image or a specific character. So for example, another one that I really, really liked is this one, which is uh, I, what I'm saying is I'm writing a book called Dreams of a Tennis Player and I want to replicate this style. So I saw this book that I really, really like the cover, right? So for the book cover, and I also say the author name is Dr. Fintas. And you're going to see how it actually 
got the, the entire outline of the person, also the tennis court in here, uh, the author and perfect text rendering, like I was mentioning. So I was really, really happy with it. Um, so that's another use case, which is you have a style that you want to replicate for your own, um, like in this case, it will be for your own book cover. The next one that I really like is the redesigning interior. So for example, let's say that you have a room and you don't really know how here a painting will look like. In this case, what I said is add a painting of the Mona Lisa on the wall and add a lamp on the left side instead of that plant. Now, what you can do is if you have a specific painting uh, in mind or from a store, you can actually grab that painting, put it in also here as a reference and say, can you add it into this image of my living room? And then it will add that specific one. Here, I just say Mona Lisa is highly recognizable, right? So it's able to actually give me a perfect painting in here and with the lamp on the left and everything else untouched, which is why I like it so much because now again, you can have an empty room and you can be like, okay, how will it look this couch that I just saw from Ikea in here? You will be able to see it kind of real time, okay? Another one that I also like as well is this one, which is it can actually give you assets from a specific images. So in this case, we have Mr. Beast, right? And we have this bear. So what I say is extract this bear from the thumbnail in transparent background. So it can give you actually transparent background and you have now the asset of the bear, which is quite amazing. You just hit download and you already have this bear. And you see that it's pretty much the same bear, right? Uh, it might be a little bit different because it's not completely perfect, but you still get a really, really good um, output. Another one that I saw is with logos. So just to show you, I have this logo and I say, create an image of a store in San Francisco that has this logo, make it cinematic, right? And you see, for example, the T that it has here, this little gadget, also same thing here. Um, so it's gonna be able to gather all those details and actually put it, as you've seen in here, and create it in San Francisco. Now. I want it to be transparent and this is the first try doing this with this specific logo and as you can see here for example the eye is repeated right so it's not completely perfect but it's a really 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 good start right you see here san francisco that this one for example is perfect the text rendering so um but this is amazing because now i have a logo and i will see how it, it looks right perfect we have all these use cases now how can we actually use it or take advantage to the maximum or and what is the best techniques right so i have here three different examples for thumbnails right and yes i'm just going to be talking about the three kind of different ways that you can use actually four um that you can use this tool so the first one will be generating images so imagine that i don't have myself in here and i just have uh, create a YouTube thumbnail of this person with his hand on his face, acting surprised, or you can say of um, of any person, right? And you can say a male, a blonde, whatever, right? And it will just create a random person, right? And in the other, a chat GPT window with a socking phone that says GPT-4 is insane. So that's the first one without a character reference. But if you want to have a character reference, what you can do is just upload your specific character and perfect. What it's going to be doing is actually making me surprised so I don't have to do this face. <laughs> and it actually, as you can see, the UI is quite amazing, right? Of the chat GPT. So I, I love it. There is the text rendering is amazing. So I can actually use it. Something that I want to point out is that when you are looking at this, this is not actually 16 by nine, which is not for a thumbnail. So you will probably have to span it later on in post-production, right? So for example, you can take it to generative field from Adobe, or you can go to Canva and span it or free pick or pretty, pretty much any of these AI tools that are out there to span images. That's what you will have to do with these thumbnails if that's for your specific use case. Now we have seen here, we have a character and I'm just pretty much just saying in the prompt how I want it to look like, right? Now, another way is to apply a specific style. So for example, back again, I have here Mr. Beast, this thumbnail, right? You have the person in the middle and you have four circles, right? I wanted to have this kind of thumbnail for my own use case, right? So I have first, I put the style of or the thumbnail that I want the style from. And also, on the other hand, I have my uh, the person, the character. So what I'm saying is create a YouTube thumbnail that has the same style as the one attached, but the character in the middle should be replaced with the character I attach instead. He should be scared. Now, also, the theme is going to be about a guy that goes to Australia, right? So I wanted that theme. 
uh, that is going to be facing the dangerous animals and all that. And as you can see, it got my face amazing. And the circles, it kind of did a good, uh, not really that good job. It did a good job maybe with the animals. But as you see here, it can improve. And I'm going to be mentioning how can you improve those images? How can you actually take it to the next level? So one way is just by adding a next prompt, right? Which in this case is, it should not be grass, do more like bulldust. And I didn't pay too much attention to the circles. It's just to show you what you can do to get a new image. So that's a follow-up prompt. In this case, it actually match the specific circles for each animal. The only thing that it did not match is the aspect ratio. So probably I should have mentioned here, I want it to be wide, right? A wide image. But who knew that it was going to change? So when you do these follow-up prompts, it might switch it up a little bit and you see that the person has changed a little bit the face. So it changes a bit too much. And I'm going to be showing you something that you can also do so it does not change as much uh, from one image to another. So and for that, I have a, another one, which is you can actually have a sketches in your specific. Um, so if you have a sketch, right, a mix of a sketch with a picture and all that, you can actually upload it. And as you see here, this is myself and I have some drawings in here and I'm just saying create a YouTube thumbnail using the sketch as reference, hyper realistic. And because I don't really know how to draw that well. I have here this little hand, but I want it to actually make sense. So I'm saying for reference, the character is holding an iPad, which is in flames, and there is a chat GPT screenshot in there. And I actually created a really, really good one. I think I love it, right? It got my polo, it got the flames and all that. The only issue is that the screen, it was not the actual UI. I should have mentioned instead of a screenshot, maybe the UI, because it's actually saying ChatGPT screen, which is what I had it in here. Uh, so it did a really good job, right? And you have here similar a little bit on the UI. Now there is two ways, like I was saying, one is follow up prompt, which is I love everything. The only thing that is shouldn't say ChatGPT screen, but rather so an actual screen. Um, it did a good job, but it modified the entirety of the thumbnail, right? I really like the dark background. I really like the font. In this case, I it added the arrow, which I actually wanted in the beginning, but I like more the vibe of this one. So how can you not change completely? So what you can do is actually click into the image and then you can select here the brush and then you will just actually brush this part and say to apply a change into here. So. I just highlighted everything, right, that I want to change, and then you just describe what you want to add or remove or replace. In this case, I already did it, so I have it in here, which is it needs to be the actual ChatGPT UI. And here is looking more like the ChatGPT UI, right? And it hasn't changed the letters, it hasn't changed the background, it just has changed this part, which is what I was interested. So not only you have a few ways to play with this tool, and a lot of people are finding more and more um use cases, workflows, and all of that, but also in the editing process. And that's kind of what I wanted to mention as well. Hopefully this was helpful and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.